Hey guys, Redfield here. Hey, I've got this really important interview I did with Mayor Renette Senum. Senum. She says it Senum, not Senum. I, I heard that misspelled or mispronounced it and I picked that up. Anyway, it's an important interview. Uh, part of it did get distorted. I mean, it, it wouldn't be an important interview without a malfunction, right? We had a, a microphone malfunction at the end. If you want to stick around to the end, I will include the, the audio. And as she speaks, it was all distorted. So as she speaks, I'll repeat what she says and then I'll repeat what I'm saying. So you can hear the end of our conversation. I don't want to discard it. It's such important information. But there is a lot of good information in the beginning of this uh, this interview as well. So with that, I don't want to take up too much of your time with technical blather. Just suffice it to say, this interview took place over a telephone. It was supposed to take place over Skype. There were technical difficulties. So I'm doing the best I can in the middle of nowhere in my undisclosed location. Uh, so. With that, I give you Mayor Renette Senum and this incredible interview. She is a hero. You guys are just going to love this. Here we go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Red Pill of Red Pill Infowar. We are going to have a special interview today. I'm going to interview a very, very special person who you may be familiar with. You may have seen her on the high wire just yesterday. We're talking with Del, Del Bigtree. Uh, we have a special guest today. Her name is the is Raynette Sinem. She is the mayor of Nevada City, California. Uh, please join me in welcoming Raynette Sinem, the, the mayor of Nevada City, California. Raynette Sinem, hello and good afternoon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm just let you know I'm, I'm there just for a few more days. I'm finishing up my four-year term as council member, a one-year term as mayor, and I'm almost done in just a few days, and I do not represent the city council or the staff. Anyone at City Hall whatsoever. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on. So, um, Glad to have you, you here. Yeah, happy to answer them. Um, I'd like to start out with uh, a question on... Uh, what happened with your decision to go ahead and come out against Governor Gavin Newsom and his uh, royal edict for the face masks uh, the se for the second time here in California when he already knows that everybody has proved that what he's saying is wrong? Right. So, uh, um, well, basically, when, when I started becoming aware of the coronavirus was actually in mid January, mid late January, and um, I was very well aware of the impact of the liberty violations as well as the home of, of the economy and manufacturing. So I was trying early on, uh, towards the beginning of the year, trying to warn our city council members and staff and, and, and council representatives as well that um, there's this incoming, you know, there's something headed head our way. And, was, and the big question was about the virility of the virus. That was the biggest question. Mm -hmm. Economic impact, supply chain impact, well, that was definitely on there today. Uh, and it also looked like civil liberty uh, issues were going to maybe be on its way too if, if other governments chose to react as the Chinese government chose to react. Um, so early on, when it was supposedly spreading, um, and I do believe it is a virus. Um, I have many more questions than I do answers around it, mm -hmm. but I, I definitely think it is real. Something's going, something is going on. Um, but uh, originally, some of the early numbers that we heard, for instance, was like around the John Hopkins University saying the virus is going to double. It is doubling every five to six point four days. That was the early um, models that were coming out, the data, and even the predictive models. And according to that, I definitely was willing and comfortable with signing a declaration of, you know, of uh, emergency for the state of the city. So basically, um, you know, allow to get some emergency funding in case, you know, things go awry. And it's just put it well notice. Well, luckily, the virulence of the of the virus is not that bad here in America. Thank mm. God. Mm. And, um, and it's what I, early on, was, you know, I had my own N95 mask. I thought this really early. And, UV lights and lots of vitamin C, and myself and my family and friends were preparing for a possible pandemic. And we actually self quarantined two, two weeks at least before the governor gave his official mandate. And um, and, and I really supported people to do the same. I said, until we know the virus of this virus, we really just have to be 
conservative and be cautious and just let's just kind of be quiet for a moment, go in and and then come out in two weeks to months and we'll be better off. Yeah. Well, we did that and as you all know, like most places we've gotten the curve and um, you know, our hospitals are not inundated and we're successful. The next thing we know, um, the governor now is extending this uh, this stay in home order and now on top of that uh, demanding that when we do, you know, move around the community, that we, if we have a mask on all times. So, at this point, um, you know, we have enough data for us all to look at and to see that this is a broad sweeping mandate that really, I don't think the data that backs up. And while we say, well, you guys have the power, yeah, you have the power, but you also have the data that backs up your executive order, your decision. And it's not an executive order. And you put it out there, and maybe it's not that the Health They throw that term around like it means something. That, that, there's not, that, that's not even a term in the medical field. There's no well, such thing as herd immunity. AKA, what he's really talking about is you have all have not been vaccinated. Right, right. And that's what it comes down to. It comes down to they want to make sure we're all being vaccinated, A. And B, it also comes down to their vulnerability. Yeah. And they want to make sure that they're vulnerable. Well, they don't want to be vulnerable. They don't want to be vulnerable. Yesterday, you mentioned that a 14 uh, year old girl committed suicide because of this. Yeah. That's amazing. Right. And, yeah. So sad. Yeah. And so we lost uh, a person who's over 80 fighting cancer, and we have a long county. It actually goes to the other side of the Sierra Range, the Sierra Mountain Range. And on the other side of this, you know, huge range, that somebody died, one person again, in their 80s. And we had, like, I don't know, 130 cases maybe total. Mm-hmm. Um, positive cases and also include, you know, uh, probable cases, which is just a nebulous definition itself. And, um, you know, and, and we're supposed to be afraid, very afraid. I'm like, well, you know, how many are systematic cases? How many are, are asymptomatic, right? How many are probable versus, uh, you know, uh, you know, COVID positive? I mean, it's just the level of 
fear mongering mm -hmm. by our elected uh, our, our county representatives, our health department, our elected officials is horrifying. But and it's absolutely, uh, it's, it's actually really seriously, it's, it's criminal. Yes, I agree. And, and, and my research agrees. I have been doing a lot of research behind this and finding uh, I actually I learned from Catherine Cahill. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's a uh, world-renowned microbiologist and immunologist. And she was present for the uh, sequencing of the human genome. And she started talking right. about how they were trying to use, they used CRISPR to try and take, uh, I think she said four other, I don't know if it's protein, but she, four other properties or proteins from the HIV virus, and they blended it with this, this strain that they actually had in Wuhan, and that's apparently what's been released. And right. in and my that's definition that's and research, that fits the best definition of bio-warfare, as far as I know. Do you agree right. Right. or it's, disagree? It's, yeah, it, 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 that's the case, absolutely, yeah. You know, and, uh, and I, I have so many questions about all of that. I've looked at all these different possibilities, and I think they're all possible. Um, and, and time will tell, but what I do know right now is that we're undergoing a massive overreach of government. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's, and it's, it's unconstitutional, and while the, uh, Governor Newsom is stating that he does have executive power, well, he's an executive power to declare these type of emergencies is limited and it's a fact, and you cannot have an ever, never ending uh, emergency going on and on and on forever mm -hmm. and taking away our basic human rights, including. Uh, you know, a, a free choice, you know, whether you want medical interventions or not. We, we should have free choice of what we can and cannot do with our bodies. Uh, so I don't, I don't think it's a politics that it requires political parties and partisan. I, I just don't go there. I'm just there on the topic itself. I, sure, I sure. Think it holds political party Yes. <laughs> Two wings of the same bird. I think this is like some sort of uh, attempt to crash the economy because they're, they may be... Yeah, yeah, and I, they, sure. I think they're trying to institute a digital economy right now. Yeah, I actually think that's, you know, they're, they're now saying that it's coin shortage in mm -hmm. California, or, well, actually, there's a whole bunch of states, but I'm like, I don't know how that is all of a sudden. And then, of course, they're still they just traveling on the, on the, on the, the, the coins and the dollars. And the dollar the bills, day. right. I think, I, hyper, I, I think hyperinflation is on its way because of this. Uh, yeah, I think that we are seeing a candidate to destroy from the inside out, and it really is death by a thousand times. Yes. Um, that's what it says, right? It's, it's not one, what, not one single solitary blow, but just one cut after another cut after another cut. That is an amazing analogy. Absolutely. There's no reason for this to be happening. There's, there's no excuse. And, uh, and I keep saying that folks, if this is about health, they need to be ensuring that our children, when they go back to school, have organic lunches and physical ed, and mm -hmm. time out nature. And less Wi Fi in the classroom, but this is about health. They make sure that we are learning on you know, panels and podcasts and workshops on how to eat healthy and do their immune system and making sure that organic, um, organic uh, gardens in our community. But this is about health. That's what they're pushing on. Yep. Not for to be afraid, cut well, your mouth. No, that's just the same. They've got control of everything else with AI, so why not the health system? Have you, have, are you familiar with Senator Doug Mastriano of uh, Pennsylvania? I am not. He is fighting Governor Wolf right now. He almost had Wolf on the, well, he did have Wolf on the ropes. They, they, they worded their language in their, uh, in their statement that in the sense that he was not able to veto it, he had to take it to court. According to the lawyer team that they had, they were sure they were going to be able to get this stopped because the lawyer team told them they had to have a simple majority, not a two-thirds majority, but the, the judiciary came back with an opinion saying that they had to have a two-thirds majority, not a simple majority. So Wolf actually had an, a victory, but Governor, or, or uh, uh, Senator Doug Mastriano, he, he, he is fighting this, and he's, he's teaming up with other senators. So I don't know if you're interested in, in finding out about him or contacting him, but I'm just putting that out there. Well, I'm interested in all of it, and I think it's just important to all team up and be exact, ultimately. I think that you are I am now seeing, even from the little coverage that I've got, I've had a lot of people contact me. Awesome. And I feel like even, even my voice has helped uh, make people feel that they are not alone, but they are not alone. The press is lying to you. They're covering up the truth. They're covering up the questions. Um, they, they have their own uh, ulterior motives, and uh, people just didn't know that. So luckily, I do believe that we are all being seen as starting to work in concert. 
And what, and what you're doing is actually pretty amazing because you know, right now, the world and the, our country, we need credible heroes. And that's basically what you are. You've been there. You've been in government. You see how it works. You've watched it. You're credible. People understand you know what you're talking about. And at the same time, you're like one of the very few people in government standing up saying, look, this is wrong. Why are we doing this to our people? Why are we not protecting our people? And that right now is unheard of. I think we're seeing. I think I think we're seeing people who are vying to be king of their their camp right now. Um, I really think that's what's going on. I think there's a push. And now this may be controversial, and this is just speculation on my part, but I kind of believe with my research that we are had, we are in the middle of a, some sort of a coup, and I'm not sure who's who's actually in charge trying to take over. Well, uh, you know, I, I think I think the one percent of the one are obviously. Yes, it is. in the local post office they just we did they moved it to a new building and the first thing I noticed was that darn camera is following me all over the post office and like I looked oh. at the postmaster I said what in the world and I'm holding a book up to cover he's like why why I'm like it's creepy why is it tell it to make it stop following you oh I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it follows you know it's 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 an it's got to be I was 25 years IT. I instantly recognized it's got an intelligence behind it. There's got to be AI running this thing. It's doing facial recognition. It's got to be. It's got to be. So even when you check your mail. So moving forward, I guess, do you have any plans moving forward with your activism after you leave office? Um, as far as my leaving, uh, mayor, I think I'm going to be doing a dear friend to are very supportive. Um, they are wanting me to speak up even more. I plan on talking to more people and just really get the word out. And again, just saying, hey, folks, you have the right to ask what your elected officials mm -hmm. are not questioning anything. And, um, and, and, and ultimately, my objective is to get you a know, weekly podcast going and just put out what's happening here locally, how it's connected globally, and what we can do as far as solutions. Oh, and, great. Um, and and I'm, mm -hmm. On that note, how can my viewers find you when you start that podcast? you already have something set up, or is there somewhere that they can well, go to find I, uh, out when you're going to do it? Well, you know what? I do, I do have a website that I have. Okay, in this last part of the video, she was basically saying the same things about uh, the coronavirus that we were talking about. But she was trying to get out information about, I was trying to get out information about how people can contact her. So I've got 
her contact information up on the screen. That will be below this this portion of the video. She also wanted to talk about Zach Bush, MD. Now let me find that pad. And he was the guy, one of the he was that first doctor that came out and broke the story about how everything was wrong. And now they're trying to make him out to be a quack. So look, light. Um, one of the other things that sh or one of the other people she wanted to tell you about was Pamela Popper, and I'll put that on the screen and I'll spell, spell it out as I'm talking. Pamela Popper is it's Dr. Pamela Popper, and she has a website, wellnessforumhealth.com, um, and also Renette said I wanted to make sure that people know on the foghornexpress.com. This coming Wednesday, I believe she said it was, it could be next Wednesday, so check both Wednesdays. She's going to be doing a podcast, so she is going to continue her activism. She is going to move forward. She's not stopping. She says, you know, they've demonized the heck out of her, but she doesn't care. She can take it. She's tough. And you can hear from the interview, she's very, very intelligent. She's good off the cuff, so she's not going to have any problems, uh, you know, being an activist, I'm sure. I... Uh, I think, now I didn't get to say it in the, in the video because of that crazy distortion that happened when we had the microphone mount, but I'm saying we need more credible people like this to stand up out of government and say, look, this is wrong. This is not what I signed on for. These are my people you're trying to help me, you're trying to make me damage, and I'm supposed to be protecting them. This is wrong. This is not right. Someone needs to stand up and talk about it. And Renette sent them is that person who did set, stand up and say that. And it, these people are very few and far between. We've seen how they demonize and, and try to destroy character of these people that stand up. So I'm saying, in my eyes, Raynat Senum, you are a superhero. You are a credible superhero. With You've got your experience in the government. We, 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 know, you, we know you've seen what's going on. We know you stepped out and you, 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 you knew the risk. And you said, you know what? I'm going to stand on the side of truth, and that right there speaks volumes to your character. So, Renette Senum, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being available to such to me on such a small platform. And I want to thank you for being a patriot and a hero and standing up for the people. Um, I applaud you. And with that, I guess we'll close this out. And I just want to say, this is Red Pill signing off. The truth is out there waiting to be found. Go find some truth. Uh, from the Foghorn Express, it's P A T, the Foghorn Express dot com. Um, that is a, a blog website I have. I will, I have written the blog for a, a year now because it's just <laughs> going on. So it's hard to keep up. It is, but I will be, I will be putting stuff up there on the Foghorn Express dot com. Also, we're next to them. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Um, I do have uh, a, a Twitter account that I just kind of changed the name and got on the Twitter. I really do not utilize Twitter, but I will for my podcast. It is called it's You Bet Renette. You Bet you Renette. Renette. You Bet Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. Renette. R-E-I-N-E. Renette. I'm going to put all of this on the top of my uh, my blog roll so people can find you, too, on my website. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, I'm just really, you know, my family, we're a loud family. We're a human born. You know, <laughs> I love it. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm gonna blow. I'm gonna blow. So, uh, <laughs> Raynette, blow that horn. Okay, I, um, I do have a couple more questions for you, and then if you want to take it from there and finish up, or if you want to go further, you're welcome too. I just want to get these questions okay. in before I forget. Now, the next question is: Do, uh, do you have any advice for others uh, to help combat this? I mean, I know we need this needs to be a team effort. It needs to be grassroots. We need to get past that hundredth monkey. We need to get that critical mass. Is there any way we can get there? and counter the critical mass they've got going right now. Right. Well, first of all, I think we have to realize that we um, we have to start working with as many people as possible. Uh, there's one, gosh, what is the name? Pamela, oh, I'm quite sure the name. Uh, let me pull off if I can. Um, well, first of all, one of the things I recommend for your listeners is to listen to Dr. Zach Bush, D-A-C-H Bush, U-S-A. Check him out because, um, Dr. Zach Bush is like three time board certified uh, MD and epidemiologist, so yes, he's right. a brilliant man. And, and he really talks about, really talks about 
um, how uh, how devices work with the, the human bio, right? The human body, and how we have this incredible uh, synergistic uh, synergistic uh, relationship with viruses, mm-hmm. and how viruses mm-hmm. are, you know, these little packages that go in there, and they may help us evolve, basically. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I would really just recommend that that we watch that book. Uh, for sure, because you will definitely uh, uh, have a much better understanding of what we can and cannot do for ourselves. And then what is also very important is, um, is um, we talked about what's really important is actually building up our soil, building up our soil. Um, and that is because of... Take the red pill. Join the red pill in Oakwood. Break the matrix. Free your mind. Take the red pill.